Welcome back. We're in the Gospel of Luke, chapter 8, verse 26 through 31. Then they sailed to the country of the Gadarenes, which is opposite Galilee. And when he stepped out on the land, there met him a certain man from the city who had demons for a long time. And he wore no clothes, nor did he live in a house, but in the tombs. When he saw Jesus, he cried out, fell down before him, and with a loud voice said, What have I to do with you, Jesus, Son of the Most High God? I beg you, do not torment me. For he had commanded the unclean spirit to come out of the man. For it had often seized him, and he was kept under guard, bound with chains and shackles, and he broke the bonds and was driven by the demon into the wilderness. Jesus asked him, saying, What is your name? And he said, Legion, because many demons had entered him. And they begged him that he would not command them to go out into the abyss. Jesus finishes crossing the lake, and he comes... He comes into this country, and there's a man living in the... He, he can't be controlled. He breaks the chains. He's living among the, the graves, the tombs there. And what we have is that this man had demons, it says, for a long time. So again, demons are actual fallen angels. They are uh, much more powerful than humans. If you mess with the angels, the fallen angels, too much, you can come to a situation where... They, their will it controls your body. And so this guy is deeply affected. He seems to be possessed, not even by one demon, but apparently by multiple, multiple demon persons, multiple fallen angels. So what's interesting is that in verse 27, when he steps out, Jesus steps out onto the land, this man meets him. And you know, it seems as though this guy knew that, 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 that there's something about Jesus. Jesus is somebody who can free me. And yet he can't say a word. Instead, the demons are speaking through his voice. He wants to be delivered. Jesus crossed the lake. Perhaps he was led by the Holy Spirit to go there because there was somebody there that needed delivering and God sent him there. And so he wants to be delivered, but all he can do is the demons speak through his voice. And so that's what we have here is a guy who's in a pretty desperate state. So desperate that when Jesus says, what is your name? He doesn't say, oh, I'm John Smith. He says, uh, my, I'm, I'm, we're the demons. We're in control of this body. This is our body now. Uh, we are legion. You know, there's lots of us here. Now the demons are begging Jesus. Uh, don't throw us out into the, uh, don't bring us out into the abyss. And so we'll talk more about this. Uh, we'll carry on and see what happens tomorrow morning. But what's interesting here, uh, when somebody knew they needed deliverance, they worked their way into Jesus' presence. What's interesting is when this person needed deliverance, God the Father providentially brought Jesus to that person. And what's also interesting here is that even the fallen angels, the demons themselves, are saying, look, please, you know, we, we know you can do stuff. Uh, we'd rather you didn't do this, but do this instead. We'll see what happens, as I say, tomorrow morning. Demons are real. They are personal, particular, distinct, personal beings. They are actually angels that have been cast out of heaven. They took the side of Lucifer, and now these are in opposition to the to Jesus. They are uh, not only real, but they can come to a place where uh, we, if we mess with sin too much, we can actually come to that space where they actually occupy and control our mind and will to at least some substantial measure. We're going to leave the resolution until tomorrow. Don't worry, it's a good outcome for us. It's a good outcome for the, the guy, the possessed guy, but just... We're in a world that doesn't believe in the supernatural, uh, and sometimes we just have to stop and remember and just kind of reiterate, this is what the Bible teaches. This is a peek behind the curtain. There are uh, positive angels, you know, angels on God's side of the question. They're on your side of the question. They want to re help you be redeemed and be transformed and be forgiven. There are fallen angels who are working against us, and they are much stronger than we are, much more intelligent than we are, and, and yet God will intervene if we seek him. But we live in a spiritual space, a moral space. Uh, we need to remember that uh, not be unduly afraid of these demons. God is stronger. His angels are stronger. And let's pray. Dear Father in heaven, thank you that although we're in a dangerous place, you are ruling still. The prince of the power of the air and his minions, they're here. We know that. And yet, Lord, you intervene for us. Help us to be right. Help us to be completely surrendered to you to trust in you and your power to deliver. We thank you for hearing our prayers today. In Jesus' name, amen. There are good angels also with us. God bless you today.